Hello everybody, welcome back to Stratford Red Devils Talk with me, your host Agostino Zinga. This is the match preview for Man United versus Tottenham later on tonight. I'm going to run through my, you know, um, hopeful starting 11, predicted starting 11, go through some of my opinions in the game, what I think is Man United's probably best chance of beating Tottenham, and also maybe some brief analysis on what Tottenham are going to bring to Old Trafford. As you guys are aware, I think this is one of the second batches of matches that they're going to be featuring on Amazon. So if you haven't got Amazon Prime now, I, rec I recommend you sign up. And usually if you've got Amazon Prime, if you've got the seven ninety nine dollars version that I have, you can um, get Amazon Video for free as an add-on. I think it's part of the music package, so you should be able to have it anyway. I watched uh, I watched a little bit of the Crystal Palace and Bournemouth game yesterday, which is a bit of a bore, but that was a pretty... Um, the, the service works pretty well. They have statistics on there, similar to what you might do with BT Sports. And they also have the option, which is bloody amazing. You have the option where you can listen to the... You can watch the game with just the audio from the from the stadium. No, no commentary. So if you're a fan like me and you usually, you know, you either have like, you know, the true dude, um, the true Geordie podcast on live or another sort of like you know um, live commentary channel playing in the background and then you mute the channel then you loved it and if you just like to watch the football games without the incessant you know cries and annoying opinions of Martin Tyler or whatever else ex-pro they've got lined up against uh, alongside him I really recommend you check that out so yeah um, I'm a big fan of the Amazon stuff so far hopefully we see more of that coming up in the future and we see the monopoly of Sky Sports broken in some way shape or form because you know no one watches Sky Sports News anymore. Anymore, I think for the most part to watch live sports, unless you're in a pub or something, most of my friends either legally stream stuff or, you know, they go around to their friends and watch it. So Sky Sports are losing our money that way. So if there was a way to kind of package it all in one go, like in one under one service and pay, I don't know, 50 or 40 pound or 10 pound a, a, a month i'm sure loads of premier league fans will be up for it especially with the option of not listening to commentary that was an absolute bargain i will take all your ads honestly give me as many ads as you want but get, take away the commentary and i'm all game for it anyway let's go into the game it's a big game for us i think one of the most decisive games in probably only only gonna soul sharks tenure no matter what the club may say about him being safe about there not being any panic about there being a long-term plan in place we all know how football works if you don't get the results you don't get the time and that's how it should work right i think this assumption that you might get from people like gary neville who are essentially he, he's probably suffering from a bit of ptsd from what happened with him in valencia where he essentially he was you know proven wrong in terms of his ability to manage a side he failed in a, in a you know catastrophic circumstances and got out of the thing maybe within a couple of weeks or something within a few weeks you know it was a really quick turnaround so i think with that whole episode he probably felt as if he was owed a little bit more time to develop and involve the squad but most big teams most teams who think of themselves as big teams are not going to give managers that time and with the way football is, with the amount of money that's on the line, if teams get relegated or miss out on certain spots in the league or don't win trophies, there's too much at stake for everybody involved. And if 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 we deem if we deem some football clubs, especially Man United, are mostly money making machines, they usually just bank on the franchise and try and sell that and you know, export that worldwide. Then it's no surprise that some of those executives in the boardroom are going to be a little bit. Um, are going to be a little bit hesitant to giving people time if they're not giving any indication they're going to be able to win matches, climb up the table, win trophies, and also maybe put money in their back pocket. So Solskjaer has got a big week ahead of him. Tottenham first, and then Man City. So the Tottenham game. Um, if we take just experience of what we had last game previously against Aston Villa, then we'd say we don't have any chance as whatsoever. If you take a look at what Tottenham, how Tottenham played against, was it uh, Bournemouth? Was it was the last game Tottenham played against their Bournemouth? Oh my God, that would check here. Where they won 3 2 in the year. Bournemouth. Tottenham's last game against Bournemouth should give us an indication of just how poorly I reckon Man United are going to do. Under Tottenham, or under. No, let, let, let's talk about Man United first. Let's go through our my kind of thinking on the game. So, so far we've got a we've got a very threadbare midfield, right? I'm pretty sure everyone's going to agree. Our midfield options at the moment are pretty dire, but most of that is due because of our poor recruitment policy, uh, our decision to let go of players like Ander Herrera with no replacement in place, our decision to let go of Fellaini with no replacement in place, or a body in place to put in, in instead of him and our and our decision to um give a contract or renew the contract of uh andres Pereira and people at one matter right so we never really had the pieces in place and obviously the constant drama around paul Pogba, will he go will he stay no one knows 
So because of that, we're in a situation now where Scott McTominay, a player who people probably didn't give much chance of maybe succeeding in Man United, has now emerged as one of our most important players. And with him out injured, our midfield has completely imploded. And now the indif- in, uh, indif- indif- if indeficiencies or the shortcomings we have in defence and attack have now been exposed because we don't have any barrier or any buffer in between them to protect either side of our, of our, of our team. So with that being said, it requires a coach to be a little bit more clever, a little bit more nuanced, and think of some solutions that the general fan like me and you probably wouldn't think of because ultimately that's what they get paid for, right? So sometimes when I hear the defense of, oh, another manager couldn't do anything better with this squad, I sometimes shake my head and don't agree because I think the top coaches, the ones that earn the big bucks, the ones that ultimately um, more times than not get their teams to the you know latter stages of cup competitions or there or thereabouts and league positions, they are able to make... Um, something out of nothing. They're able to take um, players that you wouldn't, wouldn't expect to play in certain positions, put them in a certain position for a particular role. They're able to do those clever things. We see even with Cyrus Ferguson, he did it plenty of times. People like Jason Park, people like Raphael were used in interesting roles, Johnny Evans. Top managers can take, you know, what you have left in the squad and kind of assemble it to kind of make sure they, they get through over the line on a particular game. So with this game coming up, I would like to see Ole Gunnar Solskjaer maybe make some changes and obviously go a little bit different than what he has previously. And this, my lineup so far, kind of um, plays on it at the moment, right? I'm going to stick up here on a line. This is my overall lineup, I think. So, first of all, my first sort of... um, the, the goalkeeping position and the defence sort of like sorts itself out. I'm pretty sure everyone's sort of aware of who's going to be in goal, David De Gea in goal. I think right back, I'm going to stick with Aaron Wan-Bissaka, even though he's been shaky. I think what we've seen so far from our defenders that we've signed in, especially the big money signings in Harry Maguire and um, Aaron Wan-Bissaka, is that similar to when you go work in a company and you're surrounded by absolute numb nuts, your level starts to drop. It's the same sort of stuff when you play for a football team. I'm sure many of us have played in Sunday league teams, Saturday league team, men's teams, where you've played with absolute dross and you, you lose week in, week out. The moment you move to a better side, they raise your game up and all of a sudden now you're improving as a player. Same can be said for Harry Maguire and AWB. Now we're seeing them drop to a level. So now we're seeing that even though some players like Smalling and Jones do look horrible in our side, and I'm, I'm not excused in their inefficiencies as football players, especially someone like a Phil Jones, I still think if they were playing in a solid defence, if they were playing alongside people who are actually of a, a stellar level of performance and were able to pull in 8 out of 10s week in, week out, we wouldn't see the levels of stake that we do when they usually play because what ends up happening is that they when you can see just watching the game, you can see how pressured they feel when the ball comes to them because they know any mistake, no one's going to be able to rescue them out of the situation. So I would continue playing AWB at right back. I would go for Harry Maguire and Lindelof at centre back. I don't think it's worth mucking around and changing the defenders. I also think playing a someone like a Mark, uh, like a Marcus Rojo at centre back or a left sided defenders or as, as or as a left sided uh, defender at a back three against a Tottenham side that's going to be running from all different sides of the flank isn't a good idea. He's too rash in that regard. I would also stick with Brandon Williams at left back. It's a bit. I'm a bit worried because the fact that Lingard saw Shark played or subbed on Luke Shaw towards the end of the game against Aston Villa gives me the idea that he's probably trying to get Luke Shaw fit enough to play the game which doesn't make any sense if you saw Luke Shaw plodding around against Astana you would have seen that he's put on a lot of weight he's obviously clearly not as fit as he could be um, he's obviously fitter than me but he's as a professional footballer he's nowhere near the physical fitness that we need him to be which is, again shows the ill discipline and the lack of organisation and structure in our, in our team and our club overall that a player like Luke Shaw is allowed to get that big um, against Aston Villa, he didn't look that mobile either. Um, so I'm not really fond of that. Brandon Williams, of course, is a young player. He's going to make mistakes and has done made mistakes. But I think going forward, he'll be able to expose that side of defence, especially with Serge Aurier playing on the right back, who's probably going better going forward than he is going backwards. So I'll still stick with Brandon Williams. And then here's where I'd say what happens when you're um, an astute coach. This is the mixture that you do. I think the midfield is a bit where it kind of changes from what you might have seen previously in other people's lineup. Now, I would... If if um so if social formation to believed because he keeps playing the same four three three formation the same sort of shape he rotates around this and sometimes a three five three five three but for the most part he sticks with this three four three three formation. If that's to be believed, I would go for um Axel Twanzebe and Fred playing just in front of, of the back four. The reason why I do that is because I I think playing Anders Pereira in midfield, especially as a playmaker as a defensive midfielder, just doesn't work. 
I think we've already seen he's been given chance after chance after chance. He's clearly not good enough to play for Man United or to play for any top Premier League side, I would say, in my opinion. I think that he's not, tr- it's not like he's not trying. It's not that it's not, he doesn't love the club. He obviously loves the club. He's obviously busting a gut, but he just can't perform at the level that we need him to be. And his best position to play in our team is in a number 10 role. But unfortunately, I still think a player like Lingard is better than him in that role. So if you're not going to play him in his favourite position, he, he has to be on a bench. He has to just be an option you bring on at the end of the game, maybe for his energy, maybe for his dead ball um, accuracy, wherever it may be. But I reckon in this game, I would go for Twanzebi and Fred playing just in front of the back four. I think Twanzebi obviously come back from fit, obviously come back from injury, he's probably not as fit as he could be, but I would much rather start him start the game, be able to kind of um, trans, uh, recycle the ball, be able to break things up a little bit and maybe if you wanted a push you can maybe push Fred a little bit forward so that Twanzebi can screen the back four and drop him when need be and if Harry Maguire um, came out with the ball and kind of clipped one over you've got Twanzebi to kind of fill in that way and then in front of them I'd have Lingard. Lingard has had a really tough season um, a real a, a, a real tough end of the last season and the beginning of this season has been the flavor of the month. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is coming and not really started him in any of the last games brought him on a substitute and he's looked quite quite bright. He played well enough against Astana away from home but so far he hasn't pulled up any trees but I still think playing in that position as a number 10 uh, being able to bounce around being able to kind of interchange quick short passes between uh, both um, attacking forwards in terms of Rashford and James and also kind of interlinking maybe with the centre forward in Martial brings the best out of Lingard obviously the ability maybe for the ball to drop in that position so you can maybe hit some long range shots which he's really good at can be a good role too and also I think he performs the best usually in these kind of big games where the stakes are really high and the pressure's on, he tends to he tends to he tends to thrive in these kind of occasions. And I just think having somebody as mobile and as quick and as um just fleet footed as a Lingard in that position as opposed to a matter would make more sense. And again, because Solskjaer likes to uh, move his players around and have the center the person playing number 10 go to the right go to the left it probably suits him better we saw how ineffective it was having Matt in that position because effectively Matt was just hang out to dry no one gave him the ball he hasn't got the legs to kind of cover the pitch and he was essentially kept moving around to try and get the ball by the time he got the ball he's too tired to retain it it was the whole clusterfuck so hopefully playing Ling on that position um, allows that midfield free to work a bit better now again it's not the most ideal it's not midfield free that's gonna you know send shivers down anyone's spine but it's the best solution that we have with the players they have available right then up front you have James you have Rashid and you have Marshall now reports today this morning were that uh, Marshall's out injured right which again is concerning because regardless of who you play in that front in that front three especially at the top they're not going to be as able. They're not going to be able to pin the ball down and kind of hold the ball up as well as uh, Martial at all. No one can do that in our team. Um, uh, Greenwood, I would say, isn't that strike at the moment. He might end up being that when he, you know, the more he evolves and the more he develops over the years. Uh, same as Van Persie, he wasn't that kind of striker that could, you know, back into defenders and hold the ball up. But as when he came to United, he turned into that kind of number nine striker. So maybe it might happen in the future. But so far, Martial's are only out and out centre forward that should be playing right down the middle. So. I'm a bit concerned in that regard. I'm really worried that we don't have a vocal point going forward. And if that's the case, you'd have to play Greenwood because we don't have any other option. Or if you were at a stretch, what I would maybe do is maybe play an extra midfielder, uh, maybe throw in a Pereira to play in midfield, quote unquote, as a four, and then have a, a, a combo of Rashford and James playing up front, sort of like stretching the, the stretching the centre backs on either on either end of the pitch, and then having maybe a Pereira and a Lingard bursting through the middle and kind of interchanging playing as a quote unquote force nine. That's what I might have done to change it up a bit. But that's my formation going forward in the in the game. Now. Um, the worry, the worry about this formation and the worry about this team is how well Tottenham have been playing lately, especially with the balls over the top. If you see the first two goals, yeah, basically Dele Alli's first goals against Bournemouth and even the previous game against Olympiacos, I think there's a stat out at the moment that Tottenham have done more long balls since Mourinho's been charged, since the whole tenure of basically Mauricio Pochettino. So I think Mourinho's understood and exploited their key strengths, which is the attackers coming in from the wings and obviously having the ability of Deli Ali to kind of, you know, traverse and tramp, you know, the entire length of the pitch up and down continuously. And Deli Ali scored two really well taken goals um, against Bournemouth the other day from balls over the top from, I'm going to say Vertonghen or Eric Dyer, one of the others, right? 
Kipping balls over the top and delivering them in pinpoint accuracy and him able to chip it into the goal. Now, I would say if there's one weakness with our defenders, especially someone like Lindelof, is the balls over the top, is physical strikers, is being dragged all over the pitch. And with Harry Kane and Deli Ali both playing for them, I'm worried. With Son and maybe Lucas Moura coming in on either flank, I'm worried too. And with the power and aggression and the sort of combating the nature of someone like a Sissoko, I'm worried even more. So if there's one place that I see us really being weak, I wouldn't say it's even midfield, com- you know, being combative in midfield and not being able to fight with them. I will say it's more so our centre-backs being exploited, the space in between them or behind them, the lack of pace between Maguire and Lindelof, and also just generally the lack of confidence in that whole back line. So maybe that's why I might see... Um, I could envision someone like a social de- deciding to maybe do a free, push us a bit further up the pitch um, and play a bit of cat and mouse with Tottenham. So that if they clip the ball over, we're immediately in behind them as well. And there's that danger happening. So I'm I'm a bit worried in that regard. But I reckon, again, social has that jammy nature of just being able to pull a cat out of a hat, the, the, you know, pulling a hat, a cat out of a hat against the big, bigger sides. And I don't think it's going to be any different this time around. Um, I think he'll probably be able to put in a performance, maybe stifle Tottenham's attacks, maybe um, be able to kind of um, weaken their strengths out on the wing and maybe silence Dele Alli for some part. And then maybe it might rely on a moment of magic between a Harry Maguire, so uh, Harry Kane and a Marcus Rashford to sort of decide the game. I think that's what's going to happen. I think I don't think it's going to be a dominant performance by any side. I think for the most part, it'll be a game of cat and mouse. I think we'll just see a moment of brilliance from one individual, whether it's Son, whether it's Rashford, whether it's Harry Kane, Deli Alli deciding the game. And then this, that's it, lights out Irene. Um, going forward, obviously, um, it's a big concern for us as a team. I think we need to see a bit of an evolution and a bit of a change from what we've seen so far. I think it's clear to see that Solskjaer obviously isn't a top-class manager that can get the best out of these players. I don't think we've seen... We don't have any evidence apart from maybe some of the bigger games that we've won that he has any kind of um, tactical now or ability to improve or raise the level of the players he has at the moment. So the guarantees that if given money, it will all change is quite ill-advised. I think this idea that teams are only better by the t- by the players they have available to them is ridiculous. I think a lot of it has to do with the players, a lot of it has to do with the culture, recruitment policy, and ultimately the managerial direction. If your manager doesn't have a clue with how to kind of bring the best out of the players you have available, no, no good is going to come out of it. The moment they Everton get a competent manager, for instance, a manager that maybe can inspire some confidence with the players, you're going to see a different kind of Everton. And they have all the players to their disposal that can actually, you know, allow them to climb the league. But at the moment they're not performing, most down to the manager chopping and changing every every match and just you know struggling to find um a trusted 11 that he can kind of put out there to uh dominate teams and obviously win games so this idea that Solskjaer isn't to blame or is less to blame than the players is ridiculous i think they're all parts to blame and if anything what this demonstrates now this episode of Solskjaer even though we all wanted it to work i think what this demonstrates regards of how this match ends or how this week ends for Solskjaer with the next games against city is that if he does get fired if he does get relieved of his duties we have to demand the sacking or the removal of ed woodward on the side of football operations at man united completely he has he, he has to have no involvement in football whatsoever after this appointment no none at all because so far we've seen he hasn't have because i think as i mentioned previously with the tactics I think fans are allowed to have be a bit knee jerk and be a bit reactionary and be like, oh yeah, get rid of Solskjaer, he's a horrible manager, get rid, get rid. But it's up to the club to be, remain a bit more stalwart and be a bit more stoic and kind of, you know, not panic under pressure, not making knee jerk decisions and decide, hey, we've decided to go down this route of youth, you know, Brexit FC, sign all these players, young players, trust the youth, whatever it may be, and we're going to trust this process for two, three seasons. Wherever it may be, however the results, we're going to do this. They, but they haven't. They haven't given us any indication they've got a real plan in place. And it seems as if they are trusting all their footballing vision and direction of the club essentially on the manager's shoulders, which, you know, in the modern day of football is a bit short-sighted and really ill-advised. What should have happened prior was what um, we were promised even before the start of the season. We should have got a football director in, a director of football, a football manager, whatever it may be, whatever their title is, someone that could come in and spearhead the vision of the club so that with the, pl- the, cl- the fans were aware that there was a plan in place so that if we did want to criticise the manager, it would be, um, the, the criticism of the manager would be, uh, would be in kind of balance with what's kind of going on in the overall vision. But now it's quite hard to pin the blame at Solskjaer because you don't know if it's actually his fault or if it's the fault of the club. 
did we not sign players because we didn't have any money or is it because the club were unable to draw up a list of um, potential targets that we could get over the line in, in the time that we needed to get over the line we don't know what's going on so with the removal of Ed Woodward and actually getting somebody in with an actual clear football plan we actually get a statement from them detailing exactly what they want to do we might not be going forward or we're able to know exactly where we want to be and how we want to get there and then it's up to the club to then fill in the empty spots whether it be a recruitment specialist a manager a coach that way going forward because this idea that Pochettino is going to come in and just save us we, well whilst I understand the, the sentiment because Pochettino has obviously demonstrated that he can improve the level of players who are you know pretty average on paper and get them to another level and he can you know he's probably the uh, the one of the better man managers in the over in the Premier League don't get me wrong he's shown it he's shown evidence of that but the fact that he got sacked from Tottenham because he wasn't unable to win them anything any trophies especially in the season where Leicester won the Premier League he should have won them a Premier League at least his comments about trophies being an ego thing are quite concerning as well but at this stage of development of United, it's 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 a bit short sighted to think that we're going to get a manager in who's going to immediately turn us into title contenders. We need a manager who's going to take us from where we are now to maybe cont contending for the top three, top four positions week in season in season out, and then from there take the next step upwards. Because I think if we continue in this flow, if we continue in this regime, it's not it's only going to get worse. And especially um, as we welcome Mourinho to Old Trafford, a next Man United manager who has. All the reasons to kind of essentially rub it in our faces that he only he only he only failed in relative terms because he still won trophies, or whatever, and he still you know finished our highest basically finished since uh, our highest league position finished since Seth retired. He has a point to prove because he's going to want to demonstrate with Tottenham that the reason why he failed was because our structure of our club wasn't where it needed to be. Tottenham obviously have a better squad, but the way they're structured, the way they run, it kind of brings the best out of Mourinho and even a player, even a profile of play they have in their squad is going to bring the best out of him as well. So um, I'm a bit nervous of this game. I, I predict we're probably going to see, like I mentioned, a bit of a stalemate, a bit of a tight game, a bit of cat and mouse. I think a moment of brilliance will probably decide the game. So I'm going to go for 2-0. Uh, I'm going to go for 2-0. I'm going to go for 2-1 Tottenham. I'm going to think we're probably going to score early on a blitz goal. Tottenham are going to probably regain some confidence, regain control of the game in some respects. Two quickly taken goals either side of the half, and then we're probably going to have any answers for that coming forward. I don't see any other goals apart from that. So I'll say a 2-1 Tottenham victory. I would like to see a 2-1 Man United victory, but I just don't think we're going to be able to, number one, score the goals that we need, and obviously keep out Tottenham for the majority of the game. Um, again, um, if you guys have any comments regarding the game, what you think the formation would be, who you think is going to win, leave me a comment down below. But until then, this is Stratford Red Devils Talk. You find me on all your podcasting apps and on YouTube, of course. Subscribe, uh, smash the like button below, and I'll see you guys after the game is finished. Peace, take care.